Okay, so I know we're here to talk about new codecs, but there's a codec that's been around for 20 years in streaming and 25 years for me because I came out of video conferencing called H.264 or MPEG-4 Part 10 or AVC. Um, the question seems to come up every five to seven years. Because AVC is the majority of what we, we encode in, is there a crossover point that we're reaching, not just for another codec that would be um, encoding the same amount as AVC, but a combination of other codecs that would be encoding the same as AVC. And I'm curious from, from each of the panelists standpoint, we've constantly said we're gonna replace AVC and yet we still we seem to constantly still encode in ABC. So where's that crossover point? ABC will continue to 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 be a dominant um, codec. I think for quite some time. I think its share is certainly dropping. I think AV1 for some applications, and and I do think we'll see some VVC. And I think there's even um, additional things like LCVC, which could work yeah. in combination with ABC. So I, I do think we're going to see um a more splintering that i don't think we'll ever get to the same single codec um i ideal that we had hoped for i think some applications have such significantly different um pain points or care abouts or economics and and different application requirements whether it be latency or or other that that will determine what like from a conferencing perspective, right? There was a latency um, aspect to it. it. And I think we're gonna continue to see that. So some, some applications will continue to use AVC and others, I think in order to make the economics work, we'll need to move to a newer codec, like cloud gaming, for example, really couldn't make sense economically mm -hmm. using AVC. From the meta side, I think we're getting to a point where we, um are seeing that AVC is not enough anymore. Although we, we still encode uh, every video as of today uh, into an AVC rendition um, due to the lack of support of other codecs on uh, specifically mobile devices, which is the biggest population of uh, target client devices that we see. Um, but as of this year, um, we are uh, starting to see that cross point. We uh, stream into um vp9 and av1 as well um and um uh, this year we're at a point where we're moving from the minimum codec requirement being or hoping to move uh from the minimum codec requirement from being uh avc to to vp9 <clears throat> uh and so avc will be only for as a legacy support as compared to um to every video um and then a vp9 is going to be probably the the main uh Portion. I know that our application is uh, is a little different, or a set of applications are a little different. Um, but this is what we see on our side. We already see AV1 picking up a, a lot of watch time. Um, you know, it's been quoted publicly that more than seventy percent of our uh, watch time on iOS is is already in AV1, and that number is growing uh, as we go. It's somewhat somewhat similar uh, to to what uh, Hassan mentioned, even not not exactly the same. So uh, I guess for Netflix, maybe the uh, the park of devices that we, we have to stream to uh, is, is somewhat bigger. So it, it includes a lot of TVs, for example, set of boxes. Uh, so what, what we currently see is that uh, in the past year, there was quite some uptake in, in AV1 streaming, uh, but on the other hand, uh, we still have AVC as a fallback. So when <clears throat> nothing else basically can be streamed, then you, you fall back to AVC. <clears throat> and, and I expect that some, at least some AVC decoders are going to be there as uh, uh, because, because of the devices, for example, some older TVs and so on. Um, but nevertheless, so, so basically for Netflix, uh, the at least for the video on demand part, uh, this, uh, the distribution of the codex is primarily, um, it primarily depends on the on the decoder support on the devices. So uh, when we see more devices 
coming with uh, new newer codecs, then then we'll see more streaming on on with this new codecs.